Hey everyone, this is Steven Strawn again with the Cast Iron Connection. We're going to be making another cobbler today. Instead of cherries, today we're going to be making a blueberry cobbler in our cast iron skillet. We're going to have just a few ingredients. We're going to get right to it and uh, go over the ingredients really quickly and go over the, the kind of piece of cast iron that we're going to be cooking in. That's one thing I always like to do on the Cast Iron Connection is to share a little bit of knowledge about the cast iron because that's what makes the food taste so good, right? So here we go, we're going to have two 20 ounce cans of blueberry pie filling. It can be any, any brand, we got the, the most inexpensive brand we can find. Also we have one regular, we're going to use classic white, that's just what I have at the moment. You can use yellow, it doesn't really matter. One plain white cake mix. We also have a bag of uh, chopped or crushed walnuts. We got two cups today that we're going to be putting on there. The more nuts, the better. And also one stick of regular butter. Like I said today, we're going to talk about our cast iron. Today we're going to be cooking our cobbler in a Griswold skillet. This is not the highest price Griswold that you can run across. It's the round bottom. It doesn't have the heat ring in it. So it was made in probably somewhere between 1930 to 1940, in the, in the 1930s. It's still a good skillet. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's lightweight. It's uh, very finely, finely milled down where it's really slick. It's a great skillet to have. Now if you're collecting cast iron and you, you've heard the Griswold name, sometimes they can be really expensive. Some of these uh, number eight, especially those with a heat ring or over, sometimes I see them sell for over $100 without a problem. But these here are worth a little bit less than that because they have the smooth bottom, they're a little bit newer, they're not a, is, is old or as vintage as some of them that are out there. And they're not as highly prized as the collectible, but they're really good skillets for users. So this here is somewhere around, I would say, according to the Griswold book, $20, $30, maybe even more. Uh, depending on uh, you know where you know how badly you desire that piece, that really has a lot to do with it. So if you have a set of Griswolds and you have all of the pieces in that set except for a number seven, then the number seven is going to be worth a lot to you. But in general, the round bottom or the flat bottom, uh, even though it has a large block logo, uh, are not quite as valuable as the ones with the heat ring. So we're going to get started. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our contents of our pie filling. And we're going to just pour it right straight into our cast iron. Hey, at this point, you may choose to use one can of pie filling instead of two. That way the pie filling and crust ratio will be pretty even. Pour all that blueberry goodness in there. We have our blueberry pie filling in the bottom of our pan. The next thing we will be doing is taking our cake mix. And we're just going to pour this right on top. They call this a dump cake here in the south. Well, technically it's a blueberry cobbler, but uh, a lot of people down here call it a dump cake because you just dump everything in, stick it in the oven and you're ready to go. I like it because it is quick and simple. Today we're doing a uh, a little bit of grilling out and after we eat the hamburgers we want something to top it off with and I thought hey let's do a blueberry cobbler. I love to grill but when it comes down to cooking I love using my cast iron. There's something about the cast iron that I just love. I've been collecting for a few years now and there's something about cast iron that intrigues me. What I like to do, because I like the edges of the crust to be a little more uh, a little more buttery, so instead of dropping the pats, I'll just take my stick of butter and I'll go around and I'll kind of use the edge 
and I'll scrape it against the edge of the cast iron so a little bit of the butter, or a good bit of the butter, will be on the edge. Because I have noticed cooking these that uh, the very edge has a tendency to not get buttery. So we'll just go ahead and take care of that right off the bat. And the rest of it you can just do it in little pieces or pats, however how you want to do it. And we'll spread these out. Helps your butter to be a little chillier than what I've got right here because it has a tendency to, to uh, stick together, stick to your knife, stick to your fingers. Now we have the butter placed on top of the cake mix that we poured over the pie filling. You can do it nice and neatly and make all the squares evenly if you want to. It doesn't really matter, it's however you want to do it. I mean, I just like to break it up and, and just randomly make sure I've got most of it covered. You can go back and kind of touch it up and get a little bit evened out if you would like to. Just You want to make sure that the butter is, is spaced out pretty evenly. Let's don't forget, the final ingredient will be our crushed walnuts. We have two cups here, which is a good bit. If you don't want as many, that's fine. I personally like a lot of nuts. I like to push them to the edge so every little bit gets some nuts. Kind of even this out. This is going to be delicious. Okay, now that we have all of our ingredients, number one, the pie filling, number two, the cake mix, number three, the butter, number four, the nuts on the top. So we're going to put this in the oven for 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. I like to go the five minutes more on broil after you do that. So 35 minutes, on 350 degrees and then five minutes after that I'm rolled to kind of brown up the top a little bit. You just watch it close and just see, you know, make sure you get it at your personal preference. You don't want to burn it, but you want to make sure to be cooked to your personal likes. So let's stick this in the oven. We'll come back in 35 minutes, switch it to roll for five minutes, and then we'll take it out. Make sure when you take it out, have oven mitts and also have some more to set it. A good pot holder, something to keep from burning your table. So here we go. And here we go. Just like I always said, make sure you got safety. Always use your oven mitts because cast iron gets hot and it stays hot for a long time. Also, if you noticed, I used a metal, a metal pot holder because this stuff is hot enough to scorch right through your tablecloth into your table or your countertop or whatever it is. So there you go, a uh, blueberry cobbler in a cast iron skillet or blueberry dump cake. So we're gonna wait for it to cool off just a little bit, eat our hamburgers, put some ice cream on there, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, everybody, it's out. We're ready to get us some of it, so let's dig in. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the fun part.
Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strom with the Cast Iron Connection. If you've enjoyed my videos and would like to see more, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and I will keep them coming. A like would be good too. Thanks.